Okay, I got thinking. Um, Christ is a philosopher. I'm just throwing this out there. I see a lot of nihilistic stuff in the world today related to like Nietzsche, that mode of thinking, that mode of psychology. Uh, let's say, you know, I'm not advocating for any belief here. What I'm advocating for is just to think about things different and keep an open mind. Um, view Christ as a professor and on the, the professor's writing 2 plus 2 equals 4 on a chalkboard or a, a dry erase board. Everybody knows that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Christ's message, uh, treat others how you're going to be treated. That's the gist of it. Um, we all know that the best thing, one of the best things in life is to treat others how you're going to be treated. Because, uh, you know, you, everybody knows kindness fucking feels good. It feels good to be treated with respect, you know, to, to treat others how you're going to be treated. You know, nobody wants to be treated like a piece of filth or a dog or something. You know, it's, we treat homosexual people like they're the same as us, that straight people, because they're the same as us. They're not any different. That's just their sexual preference. Um, you treat other races as, I mean, I have an epidermis. African Americans have epidermises or an epidermis. I don't know how you say that. Why wouldn't I treat them the same as me? It's just a fucking skin color. African Americans just have more melanin in their skin. Um, so you start putting these into context, you know, it feels good no matter what your background, racial, sexual orientation, religious, spiritual affiliation or lack thereof to treat others as you want to be treated. So that Christ's message can be verified over and over and over again. Um, let's say the Christ equation is, you know, treat others how you need to be treated equals the golden rule. So you treat others as you, you take the golden rule and you can apply it into reality and you'll have, you'll realize that if you practice the golden rule in reality, the equation always proves to be true. So in that sense, I'm not advocating for any of the other religiosity, the dogmatic stuff that we see within the, some of the church. Um, or some of the more fringe things associated with that. I was raised non denominational Christian. I've been water baptized and born again, anointed in oil and all that stuff when I was younger. I don't identify with any one path now. I'm just spiritually open. Um, which, you know, to me, it's like, an, I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm an atheist or not, but, you know, an atheist would look up at the universe, the night sky, and it would fill them with this sense. So, what I mean by spirituality, an atheist would look up at the night sky and see a, something greater than itself or himself or herself. And that would give them a sense of awe, and that sense of awe would help them lead a more enriched life. Somebody could go to the Sistine Chapel and look up and see, you know, the, the painting of creation on it. And that could give them a sense of awe, a sense of that there's more to life than just this mortal shell, this mortal flesh. So, you know, that's, that's really all I'm trying to say is um, that Christ's message, you know, you really can't, if you can see it with the other stuff with goddesses, on um, this message, the golden rule, I mean, Google, how many religions have the golden rule dispersed through it or through them? So you start putting these into context, uh, you know, that seems, I can prove that two plus two equals four, that scientific method verifiable. So why wouldn't I be able to, if I took Christ's message and slapped a material science label on it, like psychology or philosophy of mind or psychology of something or another, you know, to kind of trick the materialists, they could basically prove the Christ message correct in a, you know, scientific method verifiable way. So I just want to throw that out there. So religion's not dead. It's just maybe what's dead is our ignorance and how we view certain things, or maybe what needs to die is our ignorance and how we view certain things. Um, having a God or not does not mean you have an evolved consciousness. It's irrelevant if somebody has a God or not. There's people that are godless that treat others like they're they're worthless. There's people that have gods that treat others like they're worthless. There's people that are godless that treat others as they want to be treated. There's people that um, have gods that treat others, you know, how, how they want to be treated. So being with a god or without a god is completely irrelevant to having a, you know, jumping consciousness or higher state of mind or whatever the hell you want to call it. I almost sound like preachy with saying that. Anyway, just a thought I had.